In 2014, our goal was to educate and inspire the next generation of young black leaders. So we set out to find the nation's best of the best to reveal the secrets to success. Our belief is that we should teach the young early the things that we learn late. Our lives are shifting the culture. Our lives are changing the narrative. This is the Shine Hard Conversation. Welcome back to another season four episode of the Shine Hard Conversation. I'm your host, Johnny Bailey, and this week I'm in Manhattan, New York with fashion buyer Marquel Turner Gilchrist. Yes, good to be here. My man. <laughs> Marquel is uh, a luxury buyer. He's done work domestically, internationally, and currently he is the men's fashion buyer at Ali Ben Ali yes. in Doha, Qatar. Correct. Correct. Yes. Um, so today he's going to talk about yeah. what that means to be a men's buyer, some do's and don'ts from the fashion industry, and of course some of the keys to his personal success. For sure. So without further ado, Marquel, it's time to shine. Yes, I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this for a few months now. We've been trying to organize yeah, this. Yeah, so. we have. Super hype. I'm, I'm glad we finally made it happen, man. Yes. You know, yes. with two, <laughs> two men put their minds together, you know, good things are going to happen. Absolutely. For so sure. um, through social media mm -hmm. and, you know, through your resume, people can see what you've done and where you are now, but a lot of times we don't know how your journey began. For sure. So talk about your childhood and what growing up was like for you. Sure, so I'm from a very small rural town in North Carolina called Johnsonville. To provide a bit of perspective, there were absolutely no stoplights, so it's super small. Wow. Um, actually, you know, my last name is Turner Gilchrist. Yeah. I grew up on Gilchrist Road. Wow. Uh, my grandfather was a preacher at the local church. You know, so very, very small town, uh, very small knit community. I grew up in a single parent home, it was just me, my mother, and my sister. Um, and I actually grew up in the house that my mother grew up in wow. as well. So pretty poor, I was a, a product of uh, government assistance, I would say, so mm -hmm. you know, food stamps, WIC, uh, free lunch, you know, all mm -hmm. of those, those public assistance programs were like my saving graces. Wow. And I don't say that to make it sound like negative or anything, but uh, it, was, it was great for me growing up in a small town because what, what it led me to kind of do in the future was, was basically found from, you know, yeah. there in that small Yeah. Time. So how did those challenges of, you know, poverty and le being in that yeah. public assistance space, yeah. how did that change you, you know, uh, through your yeah. adolescence? You know, growing up, when I, was, when I was growing up, it was extremely difficult for me because, you know, uh, childhood is tough, you know, yeah. people bully you. We all want to be accepted. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I remember you know, at a super early age, kind of having this love for fashion or for creativity. Mm. And um, I think, although at the time it seemed like a, a headache, it actually became like a blessing for me because it allowed me to blossom my creativity. And mm. I remember in particular, there was one point where I had these set of uh, overalls mm -hmm. and I would wear them three times a week. Okay. And I would challenge myself a different way to wear them. So they would be out, they would be wow. tucked in, they would be crisscrossed, you know, whatever I had to do. So I think all those many challenges to it, it allowed me to kind of develop my creativity and to be a big dreamer, you know, because a small town where no one ever leaves. Mm. Where my mom didn't even graduate from high school. So wow. oftentimes I would like read her mail for her and try to like help her understand wow. what these things meant. You know, it really kind of forced me to grow up a bit early. So many challenges, but it all helped in the end. So. Yeah, that's deep. For so sure. when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, you know, my first love, and it's still a first love to me before I knew what love was, was to be a singer. Like <laughs> I was set on being the next usher, like it was for sure in my head, even at my uh, prom. Well, you mm -hmm. come in here looking like Kirk Franklin, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the complete opposite, complete opposite. You, you know, do you remember the song, Yeah? yeah Which one? Yeah. Yeah, the Usher song, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, of course. So he, in that video, he wore like a white Atlanta hat to the side. Mm -hmm. I wore like this white Atlanta hat to my prom. So I was super, super, I thought I was going to be the next Usher. Usher, yeah. Usher. Exactly, exactly. So if people knew me for like singing around the hallways in school and everything, then, yeah. uh, I changed to fashion obviously later on. But that was my first, my nice. first love. So let's talk about your career and how you really got started yes, into fashion. For sure. So where'd you go to school? Uh, for undergrad, I went to a small HBC in North Carolina called Fayetteville State University. Okay. Uh, Bronco Pride, you know, quick shout out. Yeah. And then for graduate school, I did a dual degree program split between North Carolina State University okay. in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Schema Business School in Sophia Antipolis, France, which is in the south of France, mm. very close to Monaco, Nice, and Cannes. So that's kind of like my education. Nice, program. nice. And I studied global luxury management there, which kind of actually led me into what I'm doing now. Right, right. So when did when did you discover that? I mean, obviously when you were a kid, you yeah. were wearing your overalls different, but yeah. like, when did you say, okay, fashion can be a real career for me? Um, 
I think I didn't really discover it until after I graduated from college, mm. from undergrad, because I was in like a modeling troupe in undergrad, and in high school I had the high school superlative best dress, so I, I just thought of it more as a hobby or something mm. as a creative expression. But after I graduated and I started working, and I found out that what I was doing was something I didn't hate, but it wasn't something I was passionate about. I didn't, it didn't fulfill me. Right. I was doing all these small fashion projects on the side, mm. from like blogging to styling, yeah. that I knew that there was a real opportunity there. And kind of like these things kept getting thrown at me, right? right. Um, even without me asking for them or seeking them. And I was right. like, okay, maybe this is the, the universe. It's a calling. Quote, exactly, you know, pointing me in the right direction. So I eventually, um, I was working at my university, my undergraduate university, yeah. and I decided to quit one day. I just quit, and I. Took, what were you doing? I was working. Uh, initially, I worked for a bridge program that helped low-income students progress into okay. college. Okay, makes sense. Then I exactly, you know, my story, and then I ended up working on, in student affairs, which was a bit more cool in helping students prepare for for the workforce. Okay. Um, and then I just quit that job, and I took a sales associate role. I gave up my salary, my benefits to work in, at a retailer because I was like, I'll just start from the bottom if mm. I have to. And that's kind of how my journey began. Yeah. So what, what uh, was that, Saks? Exactly, Saks Fifth yeah. Avenue in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, $10 an hour was my pay. Uh, whatever, whatever it took though, you know, I, yeah. I was really willing to grind at that point to, yeah. to make it work. I used to work at Dillard's in, really? in Newport News, uh, $10 Newport. an hour. Wow, Dillard's. I might have been like nine seventy five actually, so wow. you might have had me beat. Okay. Dillard's is a little lower class. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking, totally joking, I love Dillard's though. But um, yeah, so that was, that's cool. So you know that retail struggle, yeah, it's like, it teaches you a lot, yeah. but it's, uh, it's not the, the most, no, the best job. No, sure. it's tough. So, after you started at uh, Saks Fifth, like what were your next steps of like, okay, I'm gonna take this fashion uh, passion and then this you know, bottom oh, level career wow. position and like yeah. catapult this to my next. Is, it's crazy because I didn't plan these steps that kind of were ordered for me. I know that sounds you know, super deep, but they were ordered for me. So mm -hmm. while I was working there, um, there was a woman by the name of Car Fratto. She was my mentor. She worked as the marketing director. Yeah. And she just invited me to go speak with her at a small function at NC State University for these graduate students and a luxury program. Mm. Me going to that uh, piqued my interest a bit because I've always wanted to go to France and live in France. I studied French in high school. Uh -huh. So that led to me applying for the, they basically recruited me into the program. Um, I got into the program, studied for that year in North Carolina and then also in the South of France. And everything just kind of went from there. Nice. So now you are the men's buyer at yes. Ali Ben Ali. Correct. Um, talk yeah. about what it means yes. to be a men's buyer and yes. what that cultural experience is like right now. For, for sure. You. So before getting to that, this point now, which is, is an amazing job, I'm super grateful for it. Right. I actually, after I came back from graduate school, I moved here to New York. Okay. And I literally, I actually was working a job in upstate New York and I was fired. Oh. Um, and so I was like, you know, I had the choice of either going back to North Carolina uh. or finally, <laughs> don't, don't go back to Saks <laughs> right, 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 right. Go back to North Carolina or, you know, taking my chances here in uh, New York City. And my fraternity brother at the time, he was like, look, if you ever want to transition, uh, I'm not a sick one, by the way, just uh, in case you're What fraternity are you yeah, in? The best one. That's all you need to know. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> not my friend. I don't know. I, don't know. I ain't so, seen you. <laughs> uh, no, I'm a noob. I'm a noob. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Trail Thomas, that. you know, previous. But Trump anyway, <laughs> yes. Um, so um, I moved here with no money, uh, basically my car and everything packed in my car. And I was like, look, I'm going to make it work. Uh, the first few months I was without a job. Um, I just made sure I had enough money for food and haircuts. So those two were like my priority. <laughs> so I stayed at home on that couch, but um, I had my haircut. And then after working here for a few years, yeah. I kind of got recruited to this position now that I do where I'm working with three different proprietors. So the company I work for, Ali Ben Ali, they have a franchise agreement to open up Galleries Lafayette, which is a Parisian department store. So it's based okay. in Paris on Haussmann Boulevard. And I oversee menswear. So what we're doing is we're working with the Galleries Lafayette in Paris, uh, with Ali Ben Ali. It was so much pressure, but it's a ton of support as well. So um, because we, we, we have to make it great, it has to be perfect. Mm. So for the past year or so, I've spent traveling all over the world. I mean, oh, wow. from Paris to Lebanon to uh, <laughs> Copenhagen, you know, trying to find the best products to bring to the store because Qatar is, 
by statistics, the wealthiest country in the world. So it has the mm. highest concentration of millionaires per capita GDP. Really? And we want them to have the best. Uh, they can afford the best. Right. There's no price And those are, that's, that's your clientele. Exactly, exactly. So I've been spending my time making sure that they enjoy the experience when we finally open. Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys are essentially curating fashion products from Correct. all across the world Correct. to bring them to your boutique? Correct, absolutely. I mean, I answer two questions. When someone comes into the men's department, when we finally open, I would have answered two questions. The first is, what do I see? So what are the products? Who are the brands from you know, luxury to advanced contemporary mm. up until what do I feel? What, what will I experience? So mm. that's anything from the lights to the fixtures on the furniture mm. to the scents to uh, the music. Like I have a hand in every single wow. thing, literally building the department store right. from an empty box. So. Wow. So what do you see? I know like people hit you up all the time, right? right. Of like, yo, how do I get involved? Yeah. How can yeah. I get a job? Yeah. What are some things, mistakes that you see people making trying uh, to get into the industry? I, I can tell you the mistakes I made and I see a lot of people doing the same thing. Yeah. And it's almost being so strict on the path that they ignore mm. um, a different path that will lead to the same destination. Mm. You know, I was very, very tough on not wanting to do what I'm doing now, actually. I didn't want to go through buying. I wanted to do something completely different, but it fell into my lap. And I'm super grateful that I kind of took the opportunity to do it. Right. So I guess be open, you know, like I, I was so stuck on going to the final destination that I wasn't enjoying any of the scenery. Wow. I was ignoring all the beautiful flowers. I wasn't looking out the window. Yeah. I was just looking ahead. Yeah. And all these great things were happening beside me, mm. and, you know, behind me as well, you know, because I need to reflect on the things I had been through. Yeah. I think it's super important in fashion because it's an industry that's based off of two things, primarily relationships as well as experience. Okay. And you can't, it's not an industry where you can just get a degree, go into it and, mm. and then be successful. You have to have those other two components. Mm. So. So how does someone go about getting those two components if they're, it's kind of like a catch-22. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And this is what I was thinking, you know, yeah. here I am a small country boy from North Carolina, yeah. coming to New York City, trying to, to make things work. But for me, I, I understood very early on the importance of relationships and cultivating those mm -hmm. relationships. And for me, that was important. So um, two of my mentors in particular, which has been so, so helpful to me, um, I reached out to one via LinkedIn just randomly. Yeah. He's a senior vice president for Hugo Boss at the time. Okay. Just how it led to the opportunity. I was like, hey, you know, I'm moving to New York um, soon, yeah. um, but now I'm in this graduate program, so I started a year before I came. I would love to just pick your brain and ask you some questions. Mm -hmm. And he is a, a black executive. And for me, what was important was to see people who looked like me. And that representation yeah. is crucial yep. because it, it allows you to understand that there, there's a viability for you to do the yep. same thing, yep. right? So ever since then, he's been super supportive. In fact, I just saw him in Milan. Yeah. We sat down. You want, you want to shout him out? Uh, yeah, Kenny Anderson. Yeah, this is my mentor. He's now the senior vice president for Giorgio Armani uh, here in New York, actually. Um, he's been amazing. My second mentor, which actually helped me decide to take the job I have now, his name is uh, Duran Guan, and he is the group vice president and mm. men's fashion director for Macy's, um, another black man who has been super helpful. Wow. He always, you know, keeps me in check if I'm like not saving money or if I'm, he, he gets me right. So he's super You're out helpful. there blowing money fast in uh, Qatar. I, I'm trying to, you know, be I careful your Instagram, the Instagram, man, money. don't, don't trying lie. To be, <laughs> trying to be careful in the Arab money, but um, you know, when you get a little bit of something, when you come from nothing and you have the experience to taste a little bit, you go a little bit wild, but Absolutely. I'm, I'm getting it together. Oh, so that's real, sure. man. That's an yeah. amazing journey, man. Yeah, it's been amazing. Truly, truly grateful, super fortunate. Um, I mean, just to think uh, almost three years ago, here in New York, I was sleeping on couches every mm. single day, yeah. like trying to figure out what I'm gonna do uh, with my life. And right. now I, I have a really blessed life that I'm super grateful Absolutely. for. So it's, you know, anything, one of my friends Charles told me one time, you know, anything can happen tomorrow. And I believe this. And I think this, this abundance of faith in your thought um, helps you believe that mm. you just keep thinking positive. Absolutely. That, you know, anything can change. Tomorrow. Yeah, the power of the mind is, is real. Because yeah, the toughest battles take place there, right? Yep, yep, like the yep. toughest battles. And I went through my period of like, man, I. Comparing myself yeah. to my friends and what everyone yeah. else was doing, like, I'm not doing enough. The battle of the mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm almost 30. I should have it together by now. Where's my bins? Where's, yeah. You know, all this, this crazy thing that we kind of mm -hmm. uh, lead ourselves to. I mean, to Instagram lead. plays a big part in that, right? Super. You think Instagram has helped you? Because I know you like, you're doing uh, photo shoots. You got, you know, the collaboratives, <laughs> collectives. Yeah. Like, did that um, help you in it's your helped, career? It's helped and hurt. Oh. Because um, because of the the comparison thing, and I used to compare all the time that my numbers aren't high enough, or mm. like why would I why would someone take me seriously in fashion, right? Until I get a, a K, I used to always joke right. until I get a K Gotta behind get my that number. K, exactly. <laughs> until I get a K behind my number, who, who do I think I am? Right. 
Um, but also it's been a great opportunity for me to network and mm. to meet amazing people from around the world. So now when I go to Paris, when I go to Copenhagen, when mm. I go to Greece, I have a connect there that I can like, what, what are the best spots? What mm. should I eat? Because I can't eat as much as I love fried chicken and mac and cheese. I can't eat that everywhere. You got to fit those tight yeah, sushi exa wearing. Exactly. I'm almost busting out. So let me just <laughs> keep it together. But yeah, absolutely. It's, it's super important to kind of to tap into that resource because yeah. it's, it gives us access. And for me, a small country boy um, from North Carolina yeah. um, whose mother didn't know anything about financial aid or applying for school or any of these things, you know, yeah. the internet was was my best friend at that time because yep. it allowed me to do what I needed to do. So I'm yep. still rocking with the internet. Same. You know, depending on what happens with uh, net neutrality. Net neutrality, yeah. that's, yeah. that's wild. That's a whole yeah, other topic. Exactly. For sure, for sure. So you got that K by your name, which <laughs> yeah, is really finally, Mama, we made it, we made it. Yeah, it's indicating to me that you're you're inspiring people, mm. you know, um, and that's amazing. But what's really fascinating to me when I sit down with people on this show is to understand who inspires <laughs> the influencers. Yes. So oh, let's talk man. about like your Mount Rushmore of inspiration. Like, who are two or three people who'd be on it? Ah, uh, tough. I told you before that I was a bit nervous about this question because I. I have been thinking about it for so long and I watched the interview with Trell Thomas yeah. and Gia Peppers and I remember like this this is like a ah oh, I expected this so I, I've come up with some some thoughts okay um, the first person is super easy I think even Trell mentioned this Barack Obama there yeah there's I don't have to list the reasons I mentioned earlier yeah. representation is, is so key right uh, second I would say Janelle Monet mm. uh, and I know this is this is when I really had to think about and it's because I don't know if you know, but she wears black and white quite often, okay. um, the majority of the time. And I, I always found her as a singer who was full of substance. And what's important for me is to be a man of substance. So mm -hmm. not to just flex on the gram, but to be vulnerable, to be honest about you know, the, the things that I've been to, you know, sharing both of those sides. And I think she does that quite well. Wow. And the reason why she wears black and white is because growing up her entire life, her mother was a maid and she wore a maid's uniform. So to honor her mother, she finds interpretations of the maid's uniform. Wow. And of course, she's like one of the best dressed women ever. Um, and then third, I would say my mother, because she taught me or she's teaching me even to this day what it means to truly be selfless. Because I'm quite selfish. I can be quite selfish. But mm. once she had me and my little sister, she put everything she could have thought about, ever wanted behind mm. and made us the focus. And I think that kind of selflessness is is admirable is courageous and it's, it's a rarity in, in so many sense so Absolutely. that's that's my those are my people yeah you didn't do too bad on that yeah i mean i you thought know. about it I'm, yeah I'm, I'm good yes well balanced yes so a major staple staple of our project is passion yes i believe passion leads people to their purpose right and similar to your journey yeah. you started with fashion and people started calling you like hey yeah. do this do yeah. that um you're walking in your purpose mm. so I'm curious to know, what is your passion? When you break oh, it down, past yeah. the clothes and the For threads, sure. like what is your passion and when did you know? For sure, because clothing is, is quite surface level, right? right? And I always share with people the difference between fashion and style is fashion is literally just the business of selling clothing. That's, that's mm -hmm. all it is. But style is so personal, it's so intimate. It's yeah. how you want to dictate or you know, convey who you are as a person. But right now, in this very moment, because you know, we, we evolve and you know, evolution yeah. takes place, I'm passionate about two things. The first thing is seeing many more people who look like me in the fashion space because there's not a lot of us. And if you're aware of what it means in terms of fashion trends and what it means in terms of pop culture, mm. you have a large part of that. But right. we're not always a part of those conversations. We right. don't always have a seat at the table, right. per se. You know. And so I'm super passionate about allowing other people to see me, to be open to questions or any kind right. of uh, advice they might need from me to get into this space. Yep. The second thing is I'm passionate about black men living life in liberation. And what I mean by that is I think we operate in a super hyper masculine complex where any sign of emotion, any sign of weakness, oh, you're soft, you know, or they try to relate it to sexuality or, mm. or anything that might be perceived in a negative light. So I'm super passionate about, again, being vulnerable. So allowing people to see me chilling or allowing them to see me in a moment where I'm weak or uh, being very honest and direct with people like, you know, I love you. How, how's your day going? And we don't, we don't do those things enough yeah. because we're always forced to be tough, 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 tough. And there's a book I read a few years ago called A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. It's one okay. of the best books I've ever read. Yeah. And she talks about when we're born, the moment we're born, the world is, taught, is, is teaching you you're not good enough. You're not handsome enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not fast enough. Work, work, mm -hmm. work. Go, go, go. So we don't really take the time to appreciate who yeah. we are and how we develop. And I want people to know, in particular black men, because I identify with that, uh, I would say the most, that it's okay to not operate in this, this, this strict structure mm -hmm. of what it 
what society places on you. It's expectation. Yeah. If you don't like rap music, that's cool. Like, right. Personally, I love trap music, but <laughs> if that's not your thing, that's okay. You yeah. know, it's, it's okay to like rock. It's okay to, to be a geek, to code, to like travel, to mm -hmm. whatever you want. It's okay to do those things. Right. So I want to help and embody that as much as I can. Yeah, that's real. And that's, it's so vital that we occupy a variety of spaces. For sure. You know, not Absolutely. all try to be the same, the same guy. Absolutely. I, I would say about two years ago, 2015, yeah, 2015, I actually started a project called The New Stereotype, uh, one of the most amazing experiences I was ever a part of. And essentially what it started out as, it was right around the time where uh, Mike Brown was killed. Mm. And I remember often in these kind of situations of uh, social injustice where the character or the personality of the person is often put on display rather than actually dissecting what happened in the case. And it, it made me a bit frustrated because I felt like, what is that, why are you conflating what he did in school or what he did two weeks ago mm -hmm. to what happened in this particular yeah. incident? So I started the project here in New York. Our first photo shoot was on Wall Street. And the idea behind it was to show black men in a different light. Yeah. And essentially what it came down to as I developed it, it was allowing a platform to celebrate and highlight the many diverse layers of black life in America mm. through fashion, photography, and film. Yeah. So we did some amazing things here in New York. We did a small campaign in Toronto right. as well. Um, there's been shoots all over the country, um, even as far as London. There was wow. one in Chicago. There was one in Dallas. There's one wow. in D.C. Oh, we should have had you now. Yeah. You know, all over. We'll so. be in next time, bro. Perhaps. Yeah, I got yeah, you. I got, I got you. a I got suit. I got one exactly. good suit. One good suit. Yeah, I can. Okay, just don't wear these shoes, but just <laughs> oh. <I'm> joking. <laughs> totally joking. <laughs> I'm totally joking. No. These co bro. <laughs> no, they're fine. They're fine. I like it. It's cool. Yeah, all I'm right. just joking. Verify me. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, this is one of my ways of trying to show this expressionism of like, it's okay to be different, it's okay to have people in different layers. Yeah. In that first set of photo shoots, actually, I was the only person who worked in fashion. When you mm. see it, you might think everyone's a blogger, but there was mm. a barber, there was an MTA conductor, there was an instructor, there was a financial analyst. Um, so we, you know, we walk in many different uh, facets of life and I wanted to celebrate Absolutely. That. So in that mission, mm. I got kind of like a two-fold question. Sure. One, what's, what frustrates you the most about today's culture? Uh, what frustrates me the most about today's culture is honestly a bit of not showing appreciation for what our ancestors went through to get us to this place. You yeah. know? I'm able to do this, we're able to do this because of yeah. a very long journey, a very long fight that many other people fought for us before. Yeah. And I don't think we always appreciate, even, even me you know, yeah. uh, specifically, we don't always show appreciation for yeah. that. Have that you had an opportunity that. to go to the uh, African American no, History Museum? No, I haven't. You know, it opened, it opened when, I, when I was away and since I've been back, I've only been back to the U.S. a few times since I moved. Yeah. I've only been to New York. Oh, you should check it out, my, bro. It's, can you get tickets now? Is it still uh, like, It's it still was, pretty backed up, okay. but I mean, they're free. You just got to go yeah. on the list. Yeah. Uh, but I it's definitely worth it, man. It, it's, it's life changing. Yeah. Just, and, it's, and that's one of those yeah. things, right? Like making sure that I uh, invest, in, even if it's in my time, in, yeah. in knowing that history and knowing that part of our culture because yeah. it's crucial. Yeah. What's been your biggest challenge in playing out those passions of um, being a black man and um, style and fashion. Like, what's been the biggest challenge in your life this far? I think the biggest challenge, honestly, is a bit on the surface level in, but it's people expecting me to only know a certain amount uh, about fashion. I would, uh, I would tell you honestly, um, I had a meeting when I first started my job, and a lady said, um, it was for a swimwear brand. Mm. She was like, are you familiar with our brand? Um, you know, speaking of the new stereotype, I'm about to be very stereotypical. Um, I was like, actually, I don't know how to swim, so I'm not as familiar <laughs> with the brand. She was like, oh, most black people don't know how to swim. So, you know, I encounter uh, those kind of things all the time. So one of the biggest things is being able to counterbalance this idea of clap back, you know, a clap back professionally, yeah. of course, but also kind of spreading the way and showing the light of that um, you're wrong, essentially, you know, you know yeah. um, we've been able to do so many amazing things. I know, are you familiar with Dapper Dan by any yeah. chance? Okay, so what's happening with Dapper Dan and what happened with Gucci, how they kind of essentially copied his design from many years ago, and now he's getting this opportunity. I, just, I was just looking at GQ Magazine, he has a full spread mm. in there. I think, I think that's important, so just showing us more and helping people understand um, that we, 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 we're doing some amazing things. Yeah, Even if you here. don't want to recognize it, right. we're going to create our own lanes. So right, and that's what Shine Hard is all about. It's just sure. shining a light on black excellence yes, across a variety uh, of industries and, yes. and verticals, man. Absolutely. Um, so what inspired you to succeed? I know you have you know, your family, your, the way you grew up, and then your goals now. What is like the core of you know, your inspiration right now? You know, at this point, it used to be because of where I was from, it propelled me to like want to do right. great things Yeah. because I didn't want to go back. Same. <laughs> that was the thing. I just didn't want to go back to that small town because I knew if I failed, I had to go back. My mom would always welcome me to her home and I always had a place to stay so I could rest on that. 
but now it's because I feel that not even many people, but a few people watch and depend on me. And when they see me do things, it kind of gives them a bit of hope. So now mm -hmm. it's not even about me. Yeah. It's about people watching me. It's about yeah. people who see me traveling, who see who sees me going to these different places, yeah. and it inspires them to want to travel. Or they're like, oh man, I have to get my passport. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that's the first step. Just get your passport. <laughs> Just because many people in my home state and even in this country, they don't travel outside of this country, right? right? Um, and there's an amazing wave of, of, of black travel and just travel in general taking place. So for me, that's what it is now. I want people to see me doing these amazing things and they attach that representation to themselves right. and just kind of go forward and try right. to do the same. Or better, or better, for sure. Do you think those people have a dream? Do you think everyone has a dream? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I think everyone has a dream. And I, I was certainly a dreamer. I was a, a hope dealer when I was young, so I, for sure. Yeah. But What I, separates people who have made their dream a reality and the people who haven't? I think it's uh, insecurity and doubt, because I used to suffer from it. Insecurity and doubt is such a sickness, right? It's yeah, like a disease. It is. And I used to be super fearful. Even moving here to New York, I said, oh, I can't afford it. Mm. I couldn't. Um, you know, it's right. super cold, it's super tough, all of those things. But I was like, if everyone else can do it, if all these other 8 million plus people are doing it, I can find a way as well. Yeah. Um, and so I did, and I think it's in the same sense of everyone else wanting to do anything else. Like, mm. just you have to just tell yourself before, before you know, like, like, I'm pretty lit, like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Even when you don't have a haircut, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fly, you know, you know, you have to hype yourself up sometimes. Yeah. You have to read these positive affirmations. Absolutely. And that's what kind of helps get over those insecurities and get over those doubt, those doubts, because doubt is a goal killer, essentially, yeah. you know. So yep, yep, once yep. you get past that, you can make it, nice. I think. So kind of change the lanes back to like the fashion. Yeah. What, what, what do you think are like the top brands out right now or fashion luxury brands and what are some accounts that you follow that are really Ah, uh, yes, yes. You know, this is crazy because I just went to a sample sale yesterday. I'm a huge fan of sample sale. As a, a buyer, I shouldn't say that because our whole goal is to get people to buy full price items. Um, but I believe in getting the most with the least. This is part of my, you know, my, my rearing and growing up. Um, but there's a brand by the name of Pierre Moss um, by this guy named Kirby, who is a black designer based here in New York City and actually did you get a chance to see the, the spread with Colin Kaepernick and GQ? Yes. Um, he has a shirt that says they have names and it has all the names of like some slang. Yeah. So he created this shirt. So he's gotcha. super, super amazing. He actually has a coat, a hoodie that he created that says uh, Stop White and White Crime in 2018. So he's very, very progressive yeah. in his approach to, uh, to fashion. And I think that, again, this representation key is, is, is super amazing. So I follow him. Um, I follow this brand uh, called OAMC. It's a, it's a Milanese brand. Okay. Um, uh, off white, of course. Um, I, whenever I first moved uh, here, I used to be super dapper. And I know it doesn't help today that I am, but you know, <laughs> being able to <laughs> being able to travel, you know, I've kind of opened up to more street style and its influences on, on many different things um, in life, and, and that's kind of the direction I'm going in. Yeah. I'm going in now. Yeah. Nice. So. We have a ton of high school, college students yeah. that follow the brand and yeah. are a part of the Shanghai community. And we have a lot of young professionals and even our peers that okay. want to get involved in fashion, that want to start their own brand. What advice would you have for them trying to achieve that goal? And what's the mindset of a fashion buyer or mm. a fashion expert? Yeah. I mean, the most important thing is confidence and, and gut because fashion buying in particular is part creativity, mm. uh, part art, uh, and the other part is commerce and analytics. Um, but what's most important is you basically have to predict what people are going to buy. Mm. And you really never know. So you have to go into your meetings, be authoritative, and really have confidence and, and, and believe in, in, in this, th this train of thought. And it's the same thing for me when I mentioned earlier that insecurity and doubt is kind of what separates people from dreaming, from yeah. the dreamers and the doers. It's the same thing. In order for me to do my job, I have to be quite authoritative because mm. everyone challenges why this brand, why this shoe, why, why this, mm. and I have to be able to exert this assertiveness. And I think we should approach our lives and our careers in that same assertiveness, you know, yeah. knowing your worth. Uh, because look, I feel like, uh, if you allow people to calculate your worth for you, they'll discount you every, oh, time, every time, right? They'll put you on sale, uh, <laughs> on promotion, nonstop. Right. So I, I think knowing your worth is a big part of that, you know, and moving forward and believing that, you know, until I get there, I still believe that I am that person until yeah. I get there. So in fashion buying, you have to go into a meeting, be authoritative, um, pretend like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. Pretend that you know the brand, mm. even if you don't. It's, it's all about being authoritative and making sure people know that you believe in what you're doing in this right. passion so that they can buy into your project. Because yeah. when I got into this project, 
we had absolutely no brands on board, none. So I literally wow. had to travel everywhere, convince mm. people to be a part of this project. And if I didn't have that confidence mm. and that assertiveness, um, it wouldn't have worked in my favor. But I'm, I'm grateful that so far it's been going quite well. Nice. So what's your next move? My next move, I can't reveal my, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, my next move, you know, I've been in Doha for a little over a year um, now, and I'm, I'm trying to determine what I want to do next. But what I will say um, with full confidence and without reservation is that I'm completely open to where things take me. So nice. if that's staying in Doha for another couple of years, if that's moving to Dubai, yeah. if that's going to London or Tokyo. You're staying international. Um, That's for yeah, sure. I, I think so because um, New York will be here, right? The U.S. will be here, right? Yeah. And, um, I think opportunity will always be here for me, but I think it will make me much more of a, a strong candidate if I have more international Absolutely. experience. Absolutely. I, I honestly love living abroad. It's, it's a great life. Um, yeah. And so we'll see. You know, yeah, I'm man. open. I'm well, open. I'm glad we can catch you here in New York, man. Uh, yes, I'm grateful. And I to definitely be here. want to come out to the Middle East and uh, come hang, hang out with you. We'll man. have you. We'll have you. This is an amazing conversation. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you can put me onto all the culture. <laughs> yes, for sure. You know. um, but yeah, man. So we're happy to have you in the Shanghai Network. Look forward to working with you as we continue our journeys uh, of excellence. Um, let everyone know how they can find you online. Anything in particular you want them to know? Yeah, sure. Um, in terms of following me on social, you can find me at Marquel Turner. That's at M-A-R-Q-U-E-L-L-E-T-U-R-N-E-R. -L -L -E -E I, I use the same name across all socials, so if you see another name, it's not me, it's a catfish, run away. Um, and yeah, that's it. You know, I, I would love to connect with anyone. I'm a person who res responds to every comment. I respond to all DMs, uh, as long as you slide in them the right way. I comment, I respond to all of them. And yeah, I'm open to connecting with people from, from anywhere. So again, thank you for letting me be here. For me, I'm still a small country boy from North Carolina, so this is super exciting. That's real. So I'm grateful. Thank yeah, you. you definitely have a high character. You know, you kept that with you. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. you guys can find me, Johnny Bailey, at one Johnny Bailey on Instagram, Twitter. Of course, follow the Shine Hard family on Instagram, Shine Hard Fam. Visit the website, it's an amazing, showcase of excellence uh, shineheartfamily.org um, shout out to the driven society for hosting yes. us here today yes. in nyc and uh closing jim um, i really believe in character character is the foundation on which we build the life we desire Absolutely. so make high character part of your reputation and that's how you shine mark well yes thank thanks you. boss it's a pleasure likewise bro thank you. Again, our goal is to help young black boys and girls discover their passion and change the world, but well, we cannot do this without the help of the Shine Heart community. Will you be the milestone donor that helps a 17-year-old black girl learn the path of a plastic surgeon? Will you be the keystone donor that helps a 22-year-old graduate break through into the tech industry? We as a community can accomplish so much together, but the time to act is now. Here's what you can do. Scroll down, click Donate, and invest in the future of our community. I'm Johnny Bailey, and together we shine.